No matter how dark things seem to be Jeremiah 33.3 says, Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and I will show thee great and mighty things thou knowest not. Join us now to hear great and mighty things that have happened in the lives of people who have been changed through our Lord Jesus as they share their testimonies of how God answers prayer. Welcome to God Answers Prayer. I'm Linda Tiano, your host today. We're delighted to have you join us, and we want to encourage you today to know that God will answer prayers. You may hear about other people having answers to prayers, and you think, well, maybe He won't do that for me. Well, He's no respecter of persons, and He says, what I've done for others, I will do for you. There's a scripture that's found in 1 Timothy 4.12. And it says, do not let anyone despise your youth, but set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. Youth for Christ was founded numbers of years ago and today has over 130 chapters across the United States as well as in foreign countries. Uh, Youth for Christ pursues young people who often feel overlooked to build relationships at pivotal moments. They partner with churches and other like-minded organizations. The gospel comes to light in the overlap of Yahweh's story, YFC's story, and a young person's story. Today we have Doug Roth and Angie, who is with us, are with Youth for Christ in Española and Northern New Mexico, and they're gonna be sharing more about how they became involved, as well as the testimonies of young people whose lives have been impacted through the years. We'll be right back after this song, Touch Your People, Lord, with Benito Cordova, Souls for Christ. We're gonna to touch your people, Lord, with this song today, Lord. We love you. We love you, Jesus. Touch your people, Lord. Touch your people, Lord. It is what you want. We're more than more. Touch your people, Lord. Touch your people, Lord. It is what you want. We're more than more. Oh 
for Christ is having a fundraiser dinner Saturday, April 29th at 6 p.m. Doors open at 5.30 p.m. at El Buen Pastor Student Center in Española. To reserve your seat today, call Angie Roth at 505-582-9522 or go to ROTHA4 at yahoo.com. Well, welcome back, and we, thanks to Benito. Uh, he's always... Well, wonderful to have around and to worship. And we want to welcome Doug and Angie Roth from the Northern New Mexico Youth for Christ. Uh, Doug is the area director, and Angie is a very vital, important part of that ministry as well. <laughs> so it's good to have you back. It's Thank good to you. be back. Thank you. So for people that um, may not have heard your stories before, uh, let's kind of go into some of that about how the Lord called you uh, into New Mexico and why? Okay. Well, New Mexico wasn't even on our radar. So uh, just to share a little bit about how I got in, started with Youth for Christ, it was in the fall, fall of 1989. I'd just given my life to Christ mm -hmm. and I was at a uh, Christian singles group meeting and we uh, had a young lady by the name of Kathy Hare who came and just shared the need uh, for volunteers uh, to come alongside Greater Cleveland Youth for Christ to reach the lost for Christ. And I felt that God was calling, that I wanted to give back and that God was calling me to do something. And so that began my journey with uh, Youth for Christ. I'll never forget that first time I walked into a, uh, a room of over 100 kids and it's like, God, what am I doing here? How am I going to uh, be able to uh, just reach out to these kids? And, and it's been a great adventure ever since then. 1993, uh, God called me to go into the inner city uh, and volunteering with Youth for Christ there in the inner city uh, in Cleveland, Ohio. A guy by the name of Steve Pausch, I volunteered under him. Steve is now one of the executive directors uh, in Northeast Ohio, but I volunteered under him as one of the uh, toughest high schools that uh, in, in the city of Cleveland at that time that we were working at. And every kid that, or most kids that came to our after school outreach, uh, they were packing. And I'm not talking packing lunches, they were, they were carrying knives, they were packing guns, but uh, they saw the love that we had for them, and we just began to pour into them. And uh, some of those kids gave their lives to Christ. And then from there, I uh, also was volunteering under Jeff Thompson, who's now the executive director of Greater Cleveland Youth for Christ. And, and um, one thing led to another, where Jeff asked me to become a volunteer club director, taking over 
uh, the inner city uh, clubs that he was directing so that he could, you know, move or open up new clubs uh, in the greater Cleveland area. And then it was 1998, God put it on my heart to go on staff with Youth for Christ, and that dream became a reality in 2001. I went on staff with Greater Cleveland Youth for Christ, and in that process, uh, we started ministries and probably, I want to say, eight to ten uh, schools in, in the inner city of Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, 2003, uh, Angie and I began dating. 2005, we got married. <laughs> 2011, we were vacationing um, in Sedona, Arizona and thought we were going to start Youth for Christ out there, but uh, that didn't happen. Um, 2015, um, it was a really rough year uh, for me in ministry. One of my uh, kids that we were working with was brutally murdered by a classmate, wow. and uh, we were just looking for a place just to, to vacation and get away, and I heard the Lord say, Santa Fe, New Mexico. So we, uh, we came out here, we vacationed, and we were asking the people, uh, the locals, where do you go to celebrate, Mem where can we go to celebrate Memorial Day? And they said, whatever you do, don't go to Espanola. And they never told us, Linda, where to go. They said, whatever you do, don't go to Espanola. So <laughs> we went to Espanola, walked the town, fell in love with it, found out they were having a Memorial Day celebration and uh, went to that celebration. There was a reception afterwards, and Angie uh, was sitting next to the mayor, and she began sharing with the mayor uh, about Youth for Christ and what we're doing. And uh, she asked the mayor, uh, Mayor Alice Lucero, so mayor, what would it take to bring Youth for Christ to your city? And the mayor said, I've been praying, and I believe you're part of the equation. And right then and there, uh, I just knew that God was calling us to leave our comfort zone of Cleveland, Ohio, mm. to come on out here, uh, northern New Mexico, Espanola Valley, to start the first chapter of Youth for Christ uh, in the state of New Mexico. And so that, it took us about 14 months to plan it. And um, August 6, 2016, uh, we arrived here uh, on a it was a Sunday afternoon, and we've been going full force since then. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I was just sitting there thinking, t taking me back to when I was a senior in high school, and I was a part of Youth for Christ. Wow. All the way back then. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, oh. So it's, it's wonderful to know, you know, that it has continued and it's growing. And Angie, just uh, share a little bit of your story. Okay, um, I didn't know how far back you want to go on that one, but um, actually I've been a volunteer for Youth for Christ um, before I even met Doug. Mm -hmm. I was helping with Greater Cleveland, off and on kind of hat hoc uh -huh. things. And I've been involved with youth ministry, oh my gosh, since I was 21. Actually, mm. younger than that, as a teenager, I was a teacher aide for emotionally disturbed kids and, and all that, so I've always loved children. Um, and teenagers. So um, Doug and actually um, we met uh, in uh, the church, our Sunday church, Grand Road Bible Church, and uh, ironically enough I would then volunteer for him. Mm -hmm. And um, then after about three years of uh, being friends and being involved with that, um, I would uh, I even underwrote tables for their banquets and, and that kind of thing and uh, we got married. <laughs> and so before I knew it, I ended up being kind of like, as he would call me, his number one volunteer. <laughs> so I do a lot of things. I'm still working as a nurse, mm. um, but I do uh, help teach in the schools. So I'm involved with the schools. I'm um, involved with all the underworkings. I'm kind of as administrative assistant. Mm -hmm. Thank God for Becky Garrett. She helps me out. She's a volunteer as well. So she helps me in that area. I, I put down that she does the wow effect. <laughs> and um, so, you know, so I, like I said, I do hands-on and also in the background. You know, so. it's, it's good to have uh, a 
somebody that has that connection in the community mm -hmm. in a in a different way. Yes, um, because that kind of rounds out the the whole way that you're able to reach yeah. the community. So now, how long have you been in Española? Oh wow! It's over. It, we will August. have completed our seventh year this August. Yeah. Wow. So it would be August of 2016 mm -hmm. that we arrived. Okay. And right. we've been in the same rental property all this time. So, yeah. So when you when you got moved there, did you find it to be different than you thought it was going to be? No, we did a community assessment actually. So what we did is when we knew that we were gonna move, we actually did a community assessment. We literally walked Española. We pray walked it, we actually did cold visits into uh, different entities. Mm -hmm. Um, addiction um, resources, because I actually thought I was going to be working as a nurse in a heroin uh, clinic, to be oh, honest with yeah. you. That was kind of my goal. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, but the Lord led me to work at Presbyterian Hospital, which is still there in Española. It was kind of funny because of me being in same day clinic in orthopedics. I would see people that we were actually ministering to, and some of the kids would say, hey, Miss Angie, see my arms better now after you put the cast on, and it was, it was just so cute. So some people would be breaking HIPAA laws, and I would just be quiet because I couldn't, you know, publicly admit, you know, but people would be doing that, and so I would see them clinically, which was my heart's desire in mm -hmm. the community, along also with Youth for Christ. And so, um, but we did a community assessment. We actually looked at schools. We, I remember talking to one of the chancellors. So we did all that prior to moving, because mm -hmm. you really have to do that so you know how to intervene and be involved in the community. Right. So when we came, outside of knowing which gas station to go to, where to shop, <laughs> those kind of basic things, we already made connections and you, probably know this already within was it three weeks from our move that we started in some brio that's a story unto so, itself we already we, we arrived um, on a sunday and at that time we were attending zion church wednesday night service was really big uh, at zion so i figured oh, we'll go to the wednesday night service we'll be under the radar and um, but God had other ideas. Pastor John calls me up and says, "We want you to share once again while you're here." So we we shared, and there's a young man out in the audience who is the custodian at Sombrio Elementary School. So he takes my story, our our vision. He runs with it. He goes to, to uh, the principal at Sombrio and says, "You got to bring Youth for Christ into our school." And so we went to, to church that Sunday and Amos comes up to me and he says, uh, and he just nudged me like this. He says, I got you a meeting with the principal and I'm thinking, you, you did what? <laughs> uh, well, I got you a meeting with the principal, Doug. Do you want to meet with them? I go, uh, sure, we'll meet with them. And so we weren't even there two weeks. We had a meeting with the principal and we were uh, we started at Sombrio about three weeks later, and it's been nonstop yeah. since then. Yeah. I mean, it's just amazing to see how that minister, how we've, God has grown the ministry. Even even during COVID, Linda, we didn't we didn't stop. No. We were involved with uh, helping the school district uh, go in uh, uh, with the lunch program. Uh, we went out two or three days a week uh, with them just to uh, feed. Uh, those that were in the school district so we were able to keep up with our children uh, in, in that way shape or form we did zoom with child evangelism fellowship because uh, we were part of their uh, middle school Bible study so we did zoom meetings with them uh, Benito who did the opening song uh, him and I got together and uh, we were actually go into his home and we would zoom meet with the kids there so we we didn't stop um, I don't think the Lord calls us to stop. The Lord doesn't call us to take a break. Even when the world took a break, God didn't call us to take no. a break. He said, yeah. you've got to keep moving forward. And yeah. we kept moving forward. And I believe because we kept moving forward, God has blessed that. And um, we are moving forward today. 
Amen. Yeah. I mean, what a story to that scripture in Habakkuk that says, write the vision, make mm. it plain. Yes. And so yes. that those wow. that see it might run with it. Yes. And, and yes. that's what we're doing where we are running with it. One of the neat things that came out of COVID was that uh, Benito and I, we, because we couldn't go in, into, the, you know, into the schools or you couldn't go into different places, even if you wanted to get something to eat. So we would do weekly lunches outside of uh, Benito's home church, Victory Faith. And it was through that that I got to meet uh, Pastor Rand, uh, Youth Pastor Randy Martinez, who's the principal. He's not the youth pastor, he's the principal. So I got to meet with him, and uh, through that, that interaction with him and with Pastor J.D., God allowed us to uh, go into Victory Faith. And so we've been there now. This is our third year. Uh, and the freedom that we have in Victory Faith to go and just share the gospel with these kids has been awesome. It's been very authentic. Mm -hmm. uh, we, uh, in the three years we've been there, there's been, like, I think, close to 40 decisions for the gospel of Jesus Christ. And um, we have been able, we started a culinary arts class there last year. And so we've been able to, this year, we've uh, expanded it a little bit. So we are not only doing uh, Bible classes, but we're in our second year doing culinary arts, teaching these kids a life skill. And that's because we just you keep moving forward. Right, yeah. right. And for kind of clarity with Benito, he is the ninth grade biology teacher at Española Valley High School. Oh, okay. So when Doug was saying he was Zooming with Benito, he was interacting with all the ninth graders at Espanol Valley High School during COVID. It was his character classes he was doing, zooming mm. in. So just kind of a little clarity on that. He ben was doing yeah. the Benito, high school the Benito whole time. and I have been uh, tag team partners now for five years in, in, uh, at Espanola Valley High School. And this year, one of the neatest things that happened is we, we've been talking about current events a lot. Uh, in his classroom uh, throughout this year. And I think we were talking about friendships. And after that talk, a young man by the name of Darius just broke down in tears, literally. Uh, and I don't know why he broke down in tears, but he had a meltdown. And so Ben uh, took him in his office and led him to Christ. And uh, now every time we see Darius, he's got a different continents on his face yeah. but this is in a public high school so we we're, we're not ashamed or afraid to share the gospel uh, in, in, the, in the context because we know that um, uh, God is allowing us to do that so it sounds like the Lord's really providing a lot of different avenues streams you know they talk mm -hmm. about streams of income but these are streams of ministry yes um, that we're you're able to reach different segments of the pro of the the population in uh, in different in different ways. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I know when we we come back in a minute, I want you to just each of you share what in your life and in your your youth uh, mm -hmm. that you feel brought you to the time of, of getting involved with Youth for Christ and how it's impacted what okay. you're doing today. Um, so we have a prayer line and we want you out there to know that we love you and that we care about what's going on with you. If you have a need of prayer, please give us a call. The number's right there on the bottom of the screen, 505-345-4165. And it's available Monday through Friday. And we have prayer partners that will pray with you. They will pray the Word of God and they pray by the Spirit and you will experience such love because the love of God flows through His Word. And when we pray His Word, it changes our lives. So please, don't hesitate to call us. It's an honor and it's a real privilege for us to pray with you. We'll be right back with more after this. Hi, I'm Robert Jeffress, Bible teacher on Pathway to Victory, and I'm looking forward to being in Albuquerque to help celebrate 39 years of KCHF TV 11 broadcasting the gospel all across New Mexico. 
Through the power of media, this ministry continues to grow, joining local churches and answering hundreds of prayer calls. Please join me Thursday, June 1st, 2023, as Sun Broadcasting, KCHF TV 11, continues to build your community, reach out to the lost, and prepare people for eternity. Registration is now open. General admission is $40 per seat. You can purchase your seat online at kchftv.org. Click on 39th Anniversary Banquet and purchase your seat today. If your business or ministry wants to sponsor a table or become a banquet sponsor, call 505-345-1991. Limited seating is available, so register today. Doug and Angie Roth with Youth for Christ in Española, New Mexico. So um, before we went to this message, we were talking about what was it in your childhood or in your past? Uh, now looking back, can you see what happened that led you into the place that you are today? Wow. I was, when you mentioned that at, before the break, I was thinking, gee, what was it? Because I've been involved with kids since I was 12 years old. I mean, I initiated being a babysitter. I babysat four kids at a time at 12, and I've babysat for decades, and I've never watched TV with them. I've always interacted. I know that sounds crazy as a 12-year-old, but I think the Lord was preparing me. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think we underestimate how the Lord has made us from birth. Exactly. And and the certain things he's put in us. I mean, I actually prepared, no one taught me about development of kids, but he put it in my mind. And at 12 years old, I'm doing pop-up books and things and games and stuff, because I'm dealing with four kids. <laughs> yeah. And um, so he's always had in my heart that I loved children and youth. And um, I shared earlier about, you know, what I did is volunteer work with mm -hmm. emotionally disturbed kids. And then also um, I was Sunday school teacher for, oh my gosh, 23, 24 years, developed me my own curriculum. And then I mainstreamed someone who was profoundly uh, compromised into the other Sunday school classes. Um, at another church, and I did that for over a decade. And um, so I've always been involved with that. Um, and so, and being, um, you know, without getting to the details from a highly abusive home, I think, you know, a person could be bitter or better. Mm -hmm. A person could learn to be more sensitive and have compassion for at-risk youth are just saying, you know, forget it. And I think the Lord allowed all that to happen. And sorry, I'm trying not to cry. <laughs> um, and learning forgiveness, sorry. <laughs> right, that's true. Um, so I can help others, at-risk kids, because I do discuss forgiveness with them. Mm -hmm. And that's like a whole new concept, you know. So, um, and even adults who have been through abuse, I said, have you ever considered forgiveness? Because some of them have gone through counseling, but it's secular counseling, not Christian mm -hmm. counseling. Mm -hmm. And I only went through Christian counseling. And so, has they ever discussed forgiveness with you? No. <laughs> See, you know, and that's where the healing begins, where the Lord teaches us yes. about forgiveness. So, um, and it is a process for some people, you know. So anyways, I've always been involved since I was 12 years old. And um, like I said, before I even met Doug, I was occasionally involved with Youth for Christ with Jeff Thompson, mm -hmm. um, who's still executive director at Greater Cleveland Youth for Christ, and who was Doug's boss before we moved. And in fact, I was babysitting his kids. <laughs> 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 All the way through when we were married. So um, anyways, um, a long story, and of course I didn't get paid for those times, <laughs> obviously. I always would tell people, just feed me. <laughs> yeah. But um, anyways, um, so, and then when we married, that's where I got, for obvious reasons, actively more involved. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And moving here, it's like, I work part-time as a nurse because I'm hours per week involved with Youth for Christ. So it's, oh. it's really, I mean, the, the Lord uses things for His glory. Yes. The thing, you know, the world says, 
take lemons and make them into lemonade. Yes. But God says, I'm going to take this and use it for my glory. Yes. So he's done that. It's beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Uh, Doug, what about you? Well, my theme verse has always been Psalm 34, 18. The Lord heals the brokenhearted and mends those that are uh, striped in the spirit. So uh, as a youth, there was a lot of uh, abuse that went on in my home. So I, d I don't even know what it was like to be a teenager because I, a lot of times I had to be a parent to my mm. parents. Uh, the abuse that went on, you name the abuse, um, emotional, verbal, sexual, uh, physical, it, it happened. My father, uh, God rest his soul, uh, was a Cleveland policeman and uh, in, in the 60s, came out of the Korea War. Uh, at that time, he didn't talk about post-traumatic syndrome. Mm -hmm. We know now that, that he had post-traumatic syndrome. And um, he took uh, that abuse out on us, uh, more physical. Uh, I, if you, if you, I can maybe just share uh, one of the things that he would do is that he, you know, we're sitting here, we're having a conversation, but he would get me and my brothers and my sisters, and he would uh, take out his police gun, his 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 right, um, his uh, thirty-eight special, and he would play a game called Russian roulette, and he would just point the gun at his head like this and go click 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 click. And it's only by the grace of God, I don't know if there was a bullet in there or not, but the, the safety never went off. And this is some of the stuff that we, that I had to deal with growing up. And so um, when I, and because of that, I ended up, uh, my father was also a violent alcoholic. So I, I ended up going into drinking and drugs by the, at the age of 16. By the time I, I was 18, I was a full-fledged alcoholic and um, don't remember being a teenager, don't remember being uh, my life in, in the 20s, but, uh, but as a teenager, I'd given my life to Christ. I was part of the Jesus movement. Everybody's been mm -hmm. talking about mm -hmm. the Jesus revolution. Well, I was right. part of the Jesus movement that uh, swept the, the Catholic church, church in the early 1970s. And, uh, but because of all the abuse that was going on in my home, it was like, um, it was, I got angry at God, I got angry at my parents, and I figured if God didn't care about me and my parents didn't care about me, then I was going to do my own thing, and it would lead to a life of destruction. And so I can, bringing it forward, I can relate to what uh, almost every kid that we're dealing with is, is going through. And I, making peace with my past, that's what allows me to go into the, into the schools to share um, my past, my story, to hear their story, and then we get to share God's story Amen. with them. And, and it's been, uh, so just give you an example. Uh, this year, we were, we were at Sombrio, we were doing a talk, and at the end of the talk, a young man by the name of Andrew comes up to me, and he just said, I want you to know that my brother was the one that was killed at Lotteberger in Espanola, and it's like, you know, how, how do you deal with that? But we've been given permission uh, uh, to go into the lunchrooms and just talk to Andrew and hang out with Andrew. And we've heard a, a lot of stories this year, uh, more than in the past, about just these kids that are hurting. Yeah. Um, and uh, we, had a, we had a fifth grader, I won't mention her name, uh, at Fairview, who asked me if, I could, if she could share her story. Um, and once again, we were, we were talking about friendships, and so we allowed her to share her story. We figured it was going to, I thought it was going to be a positive story, but she is talking about how she had been violated by her mom's boyfriend, mm. right? And she's openly admitting this to her classmates and to the teacher, and it's like, we're sitting there, we're stunned, what do we do now? <laughs> And uh, we were so thankful and praising God that uh, the principal who's going to be speaking at our banquet uh, already knew about this and they've taken action. Yeah. But these are, these are what we are hearing today. Yeah. And that's why it allows, uh, we take our, the pain of our past yeah. right. 
to go in and in, to not only reach these young kids, but even adults. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And with those uh, girls, because sometimes the principals will handpick youth, like he mentioned Andrew, that he's mentoring and meeting every week. Um, there was two girls at Fairview, one of them he already mentioned. And so the principal said, can you mentor them? And so Danielle, who's one of our staff from last June, mm -hmm. it's going to be almost a year. And as I shared with you before um, offline, you know, she's born and raised in Española, which is exactly what we want. Her name is Danielle Trujillo. And uh, so she, you know, the principal had to get permission for her to mentor those two girls, you know. Mm -hmm. Now, one, believe it or not, moved to California, so that didn't happen. And then, unfortunately, the one he just mentioned um, ended up being suspended for a particular reason. But the whole point is that we have that opportunity to mentor and help these extremely at-risk right. youth. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah, it's so, I mean, that helps to yeah. people to see, you know, and, and I mean, you came from broken backgrounds. Yeah. And, and a lot of, a lot of times you, you think that what, what is there for me in this world? Mm. Or others might have looked at you and say, I wonder what's going to come of them. Yeah. But, but God. Yes. <clears throat> and he, he said, nope. These two, I'm going to use mightily. What he uses the foolish things of the world to confound he does. the wise. Yes. 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 And I think that's what we have to realize. You know, God has given every one of us an assignment. Mm -hmm. And that assignment is to go and make disciples. Yes. And, and for those of you who, I'm just going to challenge you now, for those of you who are listening and uh, you, you feel that you're not called, think again. You are called, and you yes. are called not to be uh, on the sidelines. You are called to get out into the game and uh, be a game changer to go into your community and reach your community for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. And that's what we do. We're Amen. going out into our community. We started a skateboard ministry two years ago, and it's uh, like the Lord said, this was during COVID. COVID was just ending, and he's just said, I want you to go out into the parks. So we went to Valdez Park, uh, which is a, a major hub in the city of Española. And we just started building relationships with uh, a culture that uh, most adults just shy away from. But we started building relationships mm -hmm. with, with the skateboard culture. And it's, uh, uh, it's amazing what you know, the audience that uh, they allow us to do when we're there. I mean, kids will stop what they're doing and they'll talk with us 15, 20, 25 minutes at a time. And all we do is we just go there and uh, just share what happened last summer. Um, not to put down the church, but if you're going uh, to do outreach, don't Bible beat them. <laughs> mm -hmm. And there was this uh, group that from a local church in Española that all they would do is they would come dressed in their Sunday best and they go out to the skateboard park and they just start Bible beating these kids. And uh, so uh, Jacob saw them coming one Sunday. We were with Jacob and he saw them coming and he goes, oh no, not them. Mm. Because they had not made an effort to, uh, Jesus was relational. Yes. Very much relation very much relational and they didn't, didn't make that effort to build a relationship with with Jacob and the others and and so I just poignantly I asked Jacob I said, Jacob is very intelligent probably going to be an IT um, techie uh, down the road very intelligent young man I said uh, how come you won't listen to them but you'll listen to us and he poignantly said you don't judge me And, and that's the key when we go do yeah. our in the schools or at the skateboard park is that or wherever God is calling us with Youth for Christ, we don't judge, we love. Yes. And that's the key. And, and trust is built upon relationship. You Very know? much. Yeah. You know, so uh, <clears throat> reaching out. And so I know that um, there's so much more and that the Lord is opening doors for you. Uh, that you're walking through in obedience, but um, we want to 
want, want to let you know that, you know, I, I was just impressed by uh, talking about all this today. If you've got young people in your life, in your home, uh, I, hope, I hope you're listening to this and I hope you'll take courage from it. But I also hope that um, you will understand that, that you can make a difference. You can do something. And, uh, you know, I'm sure Doug and Angie would be glad mm -hmm. to talk to people that want to reach out to the young people wherever, wherever you are to help you to begin to make those changes and to develop those relationships because there's, we've been through such uncertain times and, and, and you know, that's not changing right now. <laughs> no. uh, there's a lot of people that are asking a lot of young people that have, they're, they are asking a lot of questions. They may not voice it directly, but you can see it in their actions and they need to be reached and they need to know the love of God. And how else will they know that unless you show them? We've got the prayer line open. We're here for you. So please call us if you've got a, a prayer need. We'll be right back with more with Doug and Angie right after this. Youth for Christ is having a fundraiser dinner Saturday, April 29th at 6 p.m. Doors open at 5.30 p.m. at El Buen Pastor Student Center in Española. To reserve your seat today, call Angie Roth at 505-582-9522 or go to ROTHA4 at yahoo.com. Welcome back. We're here with Doug and Angie Roth with Youth for Christ in northern New Mexico. And uh, Angie, you said something really special happened yesterday. Yes, yes. Um, backing it up, one of our character classes uh -huh. addresses fear. And what we did in one of the public schools is we do the entire fifth and sixth grade actually in two schools. But this particular one that I'm in, we had the kids write down, they could put down their names if they want, on postcards, I mean on index cards, um, what are they afraid of? Because the character or subject at that time was fear. Mm. And so they all wrote it and I did kind of statistics on it and I couldn't believe the highest, significantly highest percentage of fear was death and dying. Mm. They were afraid they were gonna die, they were afraid their family members were gonna die. Some of them even said, I'm afraid I'm gonna be killed. I, I was like stunned. I said, these are fifth and sixth graders. This wow. is like, no, 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 no. Something's wrong here. And so, and when I share this with other adults, they go, oh, that's because of COVID. I said, I'm not assuming anything. No. You have to ask, just like when Doug talked about the skateboarders, mm -hmm. you listen, you ask questions, you don't assume because they, mm -hmm. they're gonna give you a totally different answer, which is exactly what happened. So we divided them up in groups. It was because the sixth grade was in testing, we did the entire fifth grade. We divided them up in groups, made sure their friends weren't in the group, so they're not acting macho and that kind of thing. Because <laughs> there's a lot of boys in the fifth grade in this particular class. So we split them up without their friends so they could be transparent. And so we each were a facilitator and just asked, it's like, okay, why are you scared of death and dying? What's going on here? Not one kid said COVID. Not one kid it had none to do with COVID. Believe it or not, they didn't know if there was a uh, life afterwards. I don't know if there's heaven. I don't know if there's hell. In fact, Andrew said that three weeks ago. Um, in other words, he doesn't know where his brother is. He doesn't know where he will be. The same thing with these fifth graders. These kids, a lot of them go to church. You know what I'm saying? Different mm -hmm. denominations, different beliefs, not necessarily Christian, but some don't, but a lot of them attend church and they didn't know if there was a heaven or hell. They didn't know if they just rot in the grave. So because of that reason, because I asked them, I said, don't you guys go to church? Almost all of them, at least in my groups, yeah. Not necessarily saved churches, but mm -hmm. some of them are, you hear what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So the church is taking for granted what they're teaching or what these kids understand. You see what I'm saying? So this is a reality, I check again with the American Christian Church. And so, in fact, the, my group didn't even know what, that Jesus died on Good Friday. They were talking about the lowriders. They were talking about the walk to the Santeria. It, it was amazing, the lack of knowledge. So we had an opportunity to review what Good Friday is, 
what Easter is, well, they all kind of knew about Jesus resurrecting. That's about it. But they weren't connecting the dots with Good Friday. So went over Good Friday, went over Easter, went over heaven and hell. Now, of course, you got to preface it because it's public school. So it's like, well, this is what I believe. I don't know what you believe, but this is what I believe. Told them personal stories, why I'm not afraid to die. I might not like how I die. <laughs> I admitted that to them. I don't want to be tortured, but I'm not afraid to die. I gave them um, experiences where I should have been dead, and I wasn't, but how at that moment I released and thought I was going to die and just gave it to God. And they're all like, you know, so they heard the gospel yesterday from Daniel Trujillo, from Doug, from myself, and our different individual groups. But I'll tell groups. you, in one of the groups that I was in, mm -hmm. these kids were, there's three of them that were talking about skinwalkers. Mm. That's Native Americanism. So yeah. it's like, if we think that these kids don't know what's going on, they know what's going on. Sure. And had to tell them that that was nothing to mess with. Yeah. Witchcraft. Because there's a lot yeah. of that that's that's going on here in in New Mexico and and uh, you know one of the things that I think surprises me and Angie is uh, is that the adults aren't some of the adults that we encounter they're not they're not getting educated mm -hmm. on what is going on in their area uh, and and if you're a Christian and if you're working with kids and you need to know what is what these kids are tapping into or what is what is going on in our state mm -hmm. uh, I had um, uh, one of the one of the teachers didn't know about um, the um, suicide bill that was just passed last year uh, where assisted suicide another and they didn't know about uh, how about the legalization of recreational marijuana <laughs> Like, that, that was going that just yeah, happened and yeah. and we, yeah. you need to be educated so how so you can tell these the kids that you're working with this is what's happening this is what's going on and and like i said it's it's about being relational and that's what we do yeah and, and i mean i mean let's face it you're, you know, you're, you're speaking to our future leaders mm. and voters and people that can make a difference in, in the future. Yes. And, and so you've got to have those building blocks. And evil, the enemy wants to steal, kill, and destroy from these young so, ones. Yes. Here's what fear means. False evidence appearing real. Wow. And who does that? It's Satan. Mm -hmm. And it even says in, his, in the book, in Corinthians, that... He comes as an angel of light right. to deceive the many. Mm -hmm. And so we have to be aware of his deception. And we share those decep uh, that deception or the, those devices that he uses with the youth that we're working with. You know, the ministry that you guys are doing there, and I, I, I say you, you're doing it, but you're the hands and the feet of Yeshua, Aww. for sure, yes. you know, as you, you. as you go out. But... Um, going forward and I know that you've got some things going on because mm. so, uh, it, you know you have to have support to be able to to do the things that you do yeah. so going forward um, we uh, my role has changed a little bit I'm no longer the affiliate director I am the area director overseeing Espanola so we we felt that we needed to uh, hire an executive director mm -hmm. so that we could expand the ministry so it's like where we were in 2016 we were um, one staff person one volunteer coming up to speed today 2023 um, we're two staff people and we're in four schools and we have about 10 volunteers. Wonderful. Moving forward, we just hired Craig Langwell to be our executive director, and his role will be just to oversee the, the growth of this ministry. And uh, moving forward, we're, we have been in talks with uh, Pastor Larry Martinez, who pastors uh, the New Fire Church in Pawaki. And he's also a teacher at Pawaki High School, about possibly going into 
uh, the Pewaukee School District. We've had talks with uh, Santa Fe for about four years now mm -hmm. about expanding into Santa Fe, and now that's becoming a reality. Why? That's great. So from being able to uh, reach um, 250 to 300 kids a week, it's gonna it, it's gonna be in the in, in the, the thousands. thousands. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, so we're excited uh, about what God is doing, the growth of our ministry, where God is going to take it. And, yeah. and, and we know he's a command that he gave me during COVID. I was driving um, the periphery of, of uh, Española, and he told me to drive it three times. On the third time, I'm on industrial just looking and you could see the whole city from, an, from uh, Industrial Road. And he brought to mind Acts 18, verses 9 and 10, where he, tells, you know, where he talks to Paul in a vision. And he tells Paul, take the city. I've given you favor. And that's what he told, told me. Take the city. I've given you favor. And, that, and he has given us favor. And now we are able to move forward because we are taking these cities one kid at a time. Amen. Amen. And you have an event coming up, I believe, yes. right? So tell yes. us about that. Okay, you want me to? <laughs> I was trying to cue it. It's April, 20, it's April 29th, Saturday. Okay. Doors um, is at 609 Cale Rivera. I always have to remember the address, which is actually our church, El Buen Pastor. Mm -hmm. um, it's in the youth building. It's behind the sporting goods uh, store, Big Five, in Española. The doors open at 5.30. We're having dinner at 6. Red chili with chicken, you guys. <laughs> Pastelitos for dessert. <laughs> but um, anyways, uh, so we're very excited. We have a lot of team testimonies on video. Um, it's I'm really excited about this with the team testimonies and um, the coach, Doug, I don't think we mentioned about the football ministry, which was the first time we had it. We had mm. over 50 boys, and that's not an exaggeration. That was first, second, and third string of the football team. They came every Thursday from like September to November, through November, and during the season, and actually, it was the best season they had in over three years. They hit the front page, and it was all because the coach, Tylen, he, um, asked us to feed them every Thursday and kind of increase like the brotherhood, the cohesiveness mm -hmm. of the team. It, it and was they amazing heard the, how that they, happened. Yeah. If I could share. Sure. Okay. It was. Um, and they heard the gospel, by the way. You know, every when Thursday. God, God, <laughs> God either he tells you three things. He tells you to go. Yeah. He, he tells you to wait, or he mm -hmm. tells you no. Yeah. All right. And so, I felt. Uh, we, before we start our school year, we always try to visit the schools that we're in and just get reacquainted with them. And so on this particular day, um, we, we went to the high school and we wanted to meet the principal. Well, the principal wasn't there. <laughs> so we, we end up talking to the deputy registrar, registrar and it just happened to be, be the coach of the football team, Tylon Wilder, and he's telling me uh, how he's here to change the culture because these kids it's been a revolving door with coaches for the past four years and they hadn't had maybe one winning season in the past 10 mm. and uh, I said I'm here I'm going to change the culture so I started sharing with him what we do at Youth for Christ and he goes well can you can you come and speak at one of our practices and so we went and we spoke uh, at one of their August practices and right before we were gonna speak I go up to the coach and I said you know we could do this every week if you wanted us to and he kind of like hesitated uh -huh. so when uh, we got done with the talk it was on looking behind and beyond the differences and the, you the kids were so silent you couldn't hear a pin drop and it totally amazed the coach and he comes up to me afterwards and he says I think this could work <laughs> so but we made a promise that we would be there every Thursday to watch them practice. And so the next practice, uh, his wife, his wife, Jamie, she is the influencer. <laughs> and she comes up to me and he goes, we're looking for a place to do a Thursday night building dinner, team building dinner. And do you know of, uh, 
do you know of where we, where we could host? And I said, boy, do I know where you could host it. And so I got on the phone and talked to our pastor, Danny Espinosa, and yeah. Pastor Danny. Um, football team wants to know if we could do dinners there um, on Thursdays. And he goes, let's go for it. <laughs> and so, uh, uh, honestly, uh, from September to the end of October, uh, it was packed. We had about, between uh, young adults and, and the football team, there had to be over 70 kids or 70 people in that auditorium. And they got to hear the word of God because the coach told us, he goes, my kids need mentors. We need we need." people coming on and speaking mm -hmm. into their lives. And so we had the pastors of the valley come on in and do 10-minute uh, uh, devotionals. And, and I, at the, so at the last, yeah. at, but this, this, is, this is the cool part, the last one, we, ne we didn't tell the kids that their teacher, Benito Cordova, was going to be sharing with them because uh, Ben has like about half the football team <laughs> in, in his ninth grade biology class. And so it, he gives an awesome talk about how they are diamonds in the rough. And then he said, if any of you would like to receive Christ tonight, just raise your hand. And I, I firmly believe most of the football team and the adults that were there said that prayer to receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Wow. That's, so, that's wonderful. And we're running out of time. Yes, yep. yes. <laughs> All, but that's you know, God. That's God. It is. It is. It's totally him. And that, you know, and wow, he's just, he's, he's opening doors that no man can close. Amen. And uh, again, your event is what day? April 29th, Saturday. At 530, the doors open, 6 o'clock, the event. It is a dinner mm -hmm. and dessert. And I think people would really enjoy it, just hearing what's going on yeah. straight from the youth. You bet. And so they can go to your website. Uh, actually, uh, they can go to I my email. Do okay. the email. Do, do the email. Which okay. is droth at yfc.net. Okay. And they can do is. that or they can call 505-582-9523. But please right. leave a message. <laughs> okay. So that, that, that information is on the phone. And yeah. Again, thank you so much. And thank you. We, we want to tell you, if you haven't said yes to that wonderful gift mm -hmm. of love that God gave to mm -hmm. all mankind, say yes today. Call us. Amen. Prayer number's right there on the bottom of the screen. And as we leave, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May He make His face to shine upon you. May He lift up His countenance upon you and give you His everlasting peace. Shalom, shalom. Amen.